Over this past week, my entire portfolio has been under some serious construction. And I say that without any exaggeration. Ultimately, I ended up booting two more holdings out of my portfolio, both of which I actually think are gonna take you by surprise. Immediately following those moves, I went ahead to actually add in a position to my portfolio, then topped off the week with two additional increases of two holdings in my portfolio. All in all, I spent well over $8,500 to make all these moves. Of course, as you know, I usually do my portfolio up Updates using the portfolio tracker with Gitquin. But right now I'm filming this today, myopically focused on the investment moves that I made to strictly keep your attention on what matters most for you, which isn't exactly my portfolio. But be sure to stay tuned for the next portfolio update. I'll use Gitquin to show you just how these moves actually impacted my portfolio if that is in fact what you're interested in. Anyhow, I want to get to talking about the jaw dropping news first. I made the decision to sell out of Johnson and Johnson and I executed executed that trade this past Thursday. Down the tubes, everything's gonna be down the tubes. Now I wanna be clear with all of you, this was not an easy decision to actually make, and that's coming from arguably one of the biggest Johnson & Johnson fans across YouTube as a dividend investor. But after wrestling with this idea for some time, losing sleep over it, and really asking myself some tough questions regarding my goal and what I need to do in order to get there, my 16,000 plus dollar position had to be reallocated. Now it really all came down to J&J &J not necessarily meeting some strict investor profile criteria that I have for myself as someone who's 30 years old with over two decades to go in this investing game before really playing it much safer with value stocks like J&J. &J. But I don't want any of you thinking my confidence in the company has actually dissolved. It remains a standout dividend stock and one that I will likely return to just at the right time. So let's go ahead and click into Johnson & Johnson's stock chart here to quickly see that J&J &J is trading for $164 per share right now. And that's up from months back. But overall in the year, J&J &J has remained pretty even keel, trading sideways and only up by roughly 2.8%. If we click to the five-year view, we're going to see that it just hasn't had much growth momentum, only up by 28% or so. But clicking into the max view, we can certainly see that it has an upward trajectory, which remains favorable for us all. And of course, Johnson & Johnson, as a medical tech giant and pharma player that leads the industry, results in healthy influxes of revenue year over year, along with a balance sheet that continues to deliver through on plenty of safety as the health of the stock is there with assets that exceed liabilities by a long shot year in and year out. Now, if you go a step further here into Johnson & Johnson's dividend metrics, which will use Simply Safe Dividends to do so, we can see that the stock actually exudes safety scoring a 99 and Simply Safe with a pretty sizable 3.02% dividend yield. If we scroll down, we're going to see a 47% payout ratio, which is actually quite low for companies, and a 108-year dividend streak, which is arguably the most impressive metric to date. But scrolling down once again, Again, we're going to see an 8% growth rate, which isn't too shabby either. And the Simply Safe Dividends team is actually sharing that the stock looks reasonably valued right now. So if that's the case, why did I sell out of this stock? Well, it once again comes down to my investor profile. I'm 30 years old and I'm really in a position just to seek out more growth orientation, but not at the extent, or at least I think, of ditching the safety that dividend stocks provide. Therefore, I went hunting for a dividend growth stock within the realm of healthcare. Now you're gonna see right now on screen that I decided to go with a dividend stock that at least over the past five years has outperformed J&J &J by about 101% in terms of share price appreciation. And if I'm being honest with you, it's been a stock that I've actually had on my watch list that I've been waiting to pull the trigger on for some time. That stock is United Health ticker symbol UNH, which is a health insurance provider that dominates the industry within the United States, whether that's by selling insurance products under United Healthcare or their healthcare services under their Optum Health brand. United Health Group has the highest price per share of any company included in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and it's the 10th heaviest weighted stock in the S&P 500. That means not only is United Health Group the biggest healthcare conglomerate in the United States based on market cap and revenue, it's even bigger than J.P. Morgan Chase, the nation's largest bank. One of the interesting things about United Health is that they've done a roll-up strategy. They've been buying pieces for years of different types of companies. Wall Street is optimistic about the company future, with 22 of 25 stock market analysts covering United Health labeling it a buy. If I had to pick one stock, only one stock to buy, I'd buy United. United Health's annual revenue has increased by more than $100 billion over the past decade when adjusted for inflation. United has had superior stock performance over everybody else for two reasons. One would be strategic vision and the other strategic capital management. 
the company managed to do this through a unique acquisition strategy. United Healthcare is much more than a health insurance company. This is just a money printing machine. All things considered, when we're talking about the United States healthcare system, favoring really big businesses and not so much you and I. And we can talk all day about policy changing and the policy change agents, but at the end of the day, I lack any confidence that healthcare in the United States is truly going to change. So we might as well capitalize on it. Just pulling up United Health stock chart, we can see that the appreciation over the course of the last year has been up by over 4%. Now clicking to the five-year view, we can see over 130% worth of appreciation, which I attribute entirely to the insurance business model, which isn't dependent on new medical technologies or the production of new drugs like Johnson & Johnson, but rather on insuring all of us, absolute necessity. But scroll down with me to see United Health's revenue year over year, which is healthy in a balance sheet that is equally as healthy with over $273 billion in assets in 2023 while sitting on just $174 billion in liabilities. Now jumping right over to Simply Safe Dividends, we're going to see that we're trading one safe dividend stock for another, scoring again a 99 here, but we sacrifice some of the immediate yield for the long-term growth, which is what I'm after with United Health, with that yield now coming in at 1.48%. Scrolling down, we're going to get a lower payout ratio, which helps boost the growth there coming in at 29% and a solid dividend streak, at least as of right now over the last 31 years. But have a look here at what we are really going to gain in terms of growth rate, coming in at 41% on average over the last 20 years, year over year. And as we speak, the Simply Safe team actually rates this one as a reasonably valued stock pick as well. So I personally went ahead to buy 10 shares worth of United Health. This is a dividend juggernaut that I spent $5,679.30 on just on this one purchase alone. Now, the plan is to continue to grow this position as a stock in focus for 2025. So stay tuned for that. But I also went ahead this past week to sell another dividend stock as well. However, before I actually cover it, I want to ask for your help directly with a personal goal of mine, which is to shave down the 70% of you who keep tuning in week after week, video after video, but just aren't subscribed to 50%. That would mean a great deal to me, especially after I just quit my corporate job to pursue this whole YouTube deal. So know that you are both needed and very much wanted to create something great here. On that same note, let me know that you're actually receiving value from videos like this, the portfolio updates by tapping on the thumbs up button. So I know just to continue to keep creating content like this. Now, last but not least huge news investors i have a brand new newsletter that's rolling out very soon I'm calling it the wall street word which will be packed with macro insights stock ideas insights from industry professionals chiming in on a week-to-week -week basis and more subscribe to the newsletter that link is down there in the description but with all of that said let's talk darden restaurants ticker symbol dri which is a restaurant operator with some of america's most popular restaurant chains underneath its belt I'm talking about the olive garden longhorn steakhouse the capitol grill and eddie v's I talked about the stock a fair amount. Now, I had just five shares that I actually purchased way back in the 2020 lows. I made a fair return on it and collected plenty of dividends all along the way. But again, just revisiting my goals and my investor profile, Darden had to go and it got the boot. But it is, in my opinion, a great position for any investor out there who's seeking a little bit higher of dividend returns in terms of yield. I want to click into Simply Safe here. We're going to see a safety score of a 70. So, not quite as safe as the J&Js or United Healths of the world, but shelling out a higher dividend coming in at 3.41% worth of a yield. Now, Darden has a much higher payout ratio compared to some industry peers, coming in at 60%. And given the nature of the industry, well, we cannot really be the most stable here with this dividend player, just three years worth of a dividend streak in the making. However, it does come down with a 23% dividend growth rate, which is quite impressive. And it's now trading, at least according to Simply Safe Dividends, for a reasonable value. Now, personally, this pick would be an opportunity for someone in need of more immediate income. Income. So if you're younger, I would actually just encourage you to look elsewhere. And I'm talking about, again, more of a growth orientation. And overall, just be cautious here because of that payout ratio coming in at 60%. Now, finally, as I always do, this past week was no different. I went without exception here on dollar cost averaging into the S&P 500 with Vanguard's S&P fund, ticker symbol VOO, while also doubling down on Vanguard's tech ETF, ticker symbol VGT. Spending a combined total of $2,879.14 for two more shares worth of VOO and three more shares worth of VGT. Now, investors, those were my buys and sells in the week. I want you to stay tuned for the big deep dive coming up this next Saturday, but let me know what you've been up to this past week and definitely your thoughts on my 
investment moves that I've made this past week, comment down below, learn about and totally avoid all the investment mistakes that I personally made on my journey in this video right here. Be sure you're subscribed and investors, I'll catch you in the next one.